Hello, thank you for tuning in. What's a beacon? Common question. We take it for granted because we deal with them all the time. I'm going to be showing you what that is today. You're watching Own Land in Kenya. I am Solomon Wangwe. So what's a beacon? A beacon is basically the term used for any marker of a boundary uh, of a property. Typically the corner uh, boundary of a property is demarcated with a beacon. Traditionally in Kenya, especially for freehold land, which is uh, administered through what we call the general boundaries regime of um, survey, is demarcated or used to be demarcated with old sisal plants. Uh, I'm sure many of us remember going to shags or upcountry and when you're shown the boundary of the property usually there was a giant sisal plant there that demarcates the boundaries of the property. Today we don't do that very much because simply speaking they're no longer secure, uh, easily removable which then creates uh, boundary disputes between neighbors, which is never a good thing when you're uh, talking about investing in land. And so today, uh, the government typically, especially surveyors, government surveyors and others, will typically use uh, concrete, um, kind of like a pancake shape on the ground, flat on the ground, with the number normally uh, emblazoned on the top, to say that this is a boundary of a particular property which you can then reference with the registry index maps or the mutation maps. If you want to know what the, those are, take a look at our archives, we've done videos on those before. Uh, but today, we, especially at Goshen Acquisitions, like to use these boundaries right here. Uh, uh, beacons uh, are made of concrete. Uh, each one has uh, steel reinforcement within it. Uh, it's six foot tall, half of it is actually underground. What you can see above ground is only half of it. Uh, it typically weighs anywhere from 170 to 200 kilograms. Virtually impossible to move because it's set in the ground with cement. We do these because we want to avoid boundary disputes in the long term, especially when you're not living or occupying the property yourself. You want to be sure that if you come back later at whatever point in the future, you will be able to demarcate or denote the boundaries of your property. And it all, it's also a clear sign to your neighbors that, hey, there's a property here. If it's not yours, keep away, right? This is why beacons are important. When you do a site visit, absolutely make sure that there are beacons in place. If there aren't any, make sure that they are put in place before you finish paying for the property because that way you avoid issues with your neighbors and you also can ascertain through a licensed surveyor that you are actually buying the property that has been purported to be sold to you. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, uh, send us an email www.goshenacquisitions.com you can send us an email through there or engage with us through our YouTube channel and we'll be more than happy to provide uh, other information that might be helpful for you. You've been watching Online in Kenya. I'm Solomon Wangwe. Stay tuned for more information on strategic land investment. <music>